Hi everyone, in this video I will focus on SharePoint pages and how you can create them using Microsoft Graph API. Microsoft has rolled out under the beta version new endpoints which allows developers and citizen developers to migrate or create new pages across SharePoint sites or across organizations. Okay, let's get started and I'll show you every step how you can play with the API in order to create, update or delete pages in SharePoint. Here I am in the browser and I have the Microsoft Graph API documentation open. More specifically, I am in the beta version of the Microsoft Graph API just to show you that there is a new section here called Pages. There are new endpoints that allows users to play with pages in SharePoint through Microsoft Graph API. As you can see here, in this documentation, we have several possibilities. What we can do here is list pages from our SharePoint site. We can get a specific page, we can create a page, we can delete one, and finally we can publish a created page. These are new endpoints that you can consume using the beta version of the Microsoft Graph API. Microsoft is still working on it. Now let's start to play immediately with this Microsoft Graph API and uh, let me show you how you can list or create new pages. What I have here is uh, an instance open of VS Code. This is my Visual Studio Code instance and I'm using an extension to play with APIs. It's very cool. I made a video how you can use VS Code to consume and play with every kind of API if you want. The great benefit is that this is one of the best tools used by developers. In this way, you can use always the same tool without switching across tools. It's a nice way to stay always productive on the same tool. On the right, I have a response because just a few minutes ago, I sent this request in order to get a valid token that I can use to consume the Graph API endpoints and to play with pages in SharePoint. I'm using a, an application permission approach. So that means that I'm not following the context of the user, but I'm elevating privileges by creating resources in SharePoint, in this case, pages using the SharePoint app. I also added a link to the Microsoft Graph API documentation in the description of this video. So you can go deeper if you are not really familiar with Microsoft Graph API. You have, of course, also the, also the chance to open the Graph Explorer online in the browser and to play with the API in the Graph Explorer, but it's up to you. I prefer to work with, the, with Visual Studio Code. Now, that I have a valid token, I already placed the token in my settings JSON, and this will allow me to have now as a variable the token. And let's start to get a page, but let me show you before to start a get page list. So let me close on the right the, the panel, and here, I am now able to collect the list of pages. I have this, this end point, which is in beta, and I'm pointing to this site, the root site and sites global HR. This is my site. So what I can do here is click on send request, and now I'm getting a, res a result. I have my response here, and I have these pages, for example, culture.aspx culture, sample content, this is page layout, it's article. I can see that this page has been created by Giuliano, last modified, parent reference, content type, and here I have the web parts listed. So this is very important. Here is where the content is placed. Under web parts, you can find the content of the page. Then there are other information, like if this page has been published in, in which version. Down below, I have another page and so on. So this is an array of pages of for this specific site. Now, what I'm going to do is use this endpoint to get a specific page. I want to migrate and move a specific page from a site to another. In this case, I want to collect this specific page from the root site. If I click on send request, we can see that I'm pointing the company benefit 1.aspx. 
this is the, the page that I want to migrate. Now let me show you this page how it looks like. Let me go on the benefits for employees. I have this page open in the browser. I have the root site, site pages, company, benefit one dot ASPX. And this is the content of the page. I want to move this page to another site, which is in my case, this one, the global HR site. Let me go back on VS Code. And what you need to do is take the ID of this page. And then let me open now another endpoint that I have here called post page. This is the page that I want to that I want to move. From the previous response, we can see that we have several important attributes and properties that we have to use in order to migrate and recreate the page. What I have here is the name, the title and the web parts. This is all I need to create the page on, uh, on a specific and target SharePoint site. In this case, using always the beta version of this endpoint, I'm pointing to this web site, to this SharePoint site, global HR then pages. So let me run this one now. And now I got the response succeeded and I have a new ID. This is the new ID of the page just created in global HR. I have to take this one and it's very important because this page is not yet published. If I scroll down, we can see the property publishing state, which is in checkout. This means that nobody can see this page because the page is created by SharePoint, by the SharePoint app. Now to make this page visible to everybody, to the people that have access to the Global HR site, I need to publish this page. To do that, I have another endpoint here, publish page, and let me close the previous response. And this is the endpoint how it looks like. Now I have to change the ID of the page because this is a previous test. And I added now the current ID of the page created under global HR. Now, using uh, in the end of this endpoint publish, I'm going to publish now this page. We, I don't need to add a payload in the body of my post request. You, you can keep it as is. And now I have an HTTP 204, no content, but it has succeeded. Now, if I open the browser and if I make a refresh of this page, Global HR under site pages, I can see the new page, Company Benefit One, just created about one minute ago. If I open the page, we can see the content of the page, exactly how it was at the beginning. So I migrated this page in another site. This is a very smoothly and fast way to move pages, especially if you have a lot of pages to move across sites or across SharePoint tenants. Now let me show you another scenario using Power Automate or Logic Apps. I am back in the site pages of the Global HR. I'm going to remove the company benefit page just created consuming the Microsoft Graph API because I'm going to recreate the same page but using Power Automate. I have here another instance of the browser open, I'm going to edit a flow that I just created. I will run this manually and I have created three variables because I'm going uh, to use an application permission approach to consume the Graph API. I added here the app ID, the app secret that I'm not going to open it. Otherwise, you are going to see the, the secret of my used my, by my app, the tenant ID, and then we have other and additional steps. Before to, to go deeper in this, in this step, just a quick view of the application permission and the app registered in my Active Directory. So I'm going to open now the portal.azure.com using my admin of my tenant. Going in Azure Active Directory, I want to show you what kind, very, very fast, what kind of permission you need to configure in order to play with the Graph API. 
So I created here an app under app registration in me in my Active Directory called the POC Proof of Concept, and uh, I defined a secret here. And under API permission, you can see several Microsoft Graph API permission that I added. What you need is this permission if you want to play with pages using the Graph API. Now in the secrets, you can see that I generated a secret and with this secret, I can then take a valid token and then consume the endpoint of the Graph API according to the permission that I specified here. This is the, conf the configuration that you have to perform in the Active Directory. Now let's go back to the Power Automate flow and now let's start to, to see every step that I created here here I added a normal HTTP request, post request towards this endpoint in order to get a valid token. Then I parse the result by grabbing uh, then uh, in the next steps the access token because you have to put this in the header. And here I have the HTTP get page. I'm consuming using the beta version this endpoint. This is the root site and I'm going to get this specific page, which is the company benefit 1.aspx page. Here in the header, I have the authorization bearer with the access token. Then I parse the result of this. In this way, I can reuse the ID easily of this page. Here I have another step to compose the JSON that I'm going to use in the HTTP post page. So here, what I'm adding is the payload that I'm going to use later. I have the name, the title of the page, and then weapons. And this is the, the property which contain the content of the page. Very important. In the next step, what I added here is an HTTP post page. I'm targeting the SharePoint Global HR pages. I have in the content type the application in the header, the content type application JSON, always the, the authorization. And then I have the output coming from the, the post page from this step. Then I parse again the result of this one, of this request in order to grab the, the ID of the page just created. And finally, I publish this page in the new site. Now, when you deal with Power Automate and Logic Apps, when you make a post, you have to define always the content type, otherwise you get an error. This endpoint doesn't expect to have a payload in the body, but to avoid this issue in Power Automate or to, to work with Power Automate and Logic App, you have to put this in the header, content type, application JSON, even if you don't have any paid load in the body. But what you have to do is place the curly brackets in the body, so you are going to pass basically an empty JSON payload in the body. In this way, in Power Automate and in Logic Apps, this request will be processed and the Graph API will give you a response. Now I'm going to test this Power Automate flow by clicking on test, manually test and run flow. Let me click on done and let's wait the, the flow perform every step. Here we go, it's, it's completed. This means that if I open my SharePoint site and if I jump in Global HR, I previously deleted the page created with Visual Studio Code consuming the Graph API but if I make a refresh, I will see right now, a few seconds ago, the page created using Power Automate. The page has been created by SharePoint app because I'm using the application permission approach for the Graph API, but the page is here, it's created. So you can follow any kind of approach that you want using Power Automate, using an Azure function, whatever, the scenario it's very flexible and open because it's an API. All right, put a comment down below. What do you think about this feature? I'm very curious and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If yes, please consider to subscribe. I hope to see you next time.